Good afternoon, folks. Uh, we're coming to you live from the Davis County Fiscal uh, Courtroom. My name is Al Mattingly. I'm the Davis County Judge Executive. I'm here today with some folks from the media and some very important folks from uh, the grad uh, office, from the Alderman Area Office, and from United Way. And what we want to do today is talk about the utility assistance that is available to those folks who are specifically in Davis County. Now, when we get to talking about grad, there are seven counties in the grad region. And when we get to talk about the Alderman area, 19, 21, 36. 36. Well, I mean, give a county or take a county. So, but we're not talking about any counties today except for Davis County. So we've got about 25 minutes to do this presentation, and then we're gonna go live on a Zoom call with pastors and other not-for-profit agencies that, that can help get the word out. One of the things that we're doing, the reason we're doing this today is, is that there are some traditional uh, pots of money for utility assistance, and we also have a non-traditional, actually a couple non-traditional, uh, pots of money that have also become available. I know that we have folks in our community who are, who are hurting because of the utility bills, their water bills, electric, gas, and all that. And we want to make sure that we get this money out to the folks who need it. The money out to the folks that the money was designated for. So uh, with that, I'm, what I'm going to do is introduce some folks, and once I introduce them, then I'm going to ask each of them to come up and talk about each of their areas of responsibility. So from all of an area, I have Robin Mattingly and Brandon Harley. Robin and Brandon, thanks for being here today. Uh, from GRAD, the GRAD uh, office, uh, and again, that represents, GRAD represents seven counties, Hancock, Ohio, McLean, uh, Webster, Union, Henderson, and Davis County. Um, and I ha also have from uh, United Way, Brian Matthew, isn't that correct? I'm sorry? Blaine. Blaine. Did I say Brian? If I put my reading glasses on, it is Blaine. Thank you. Uh, each, of the, each of those folks have a little bit of information that they want to share with us. If you need some information while they are talking, you're welcome to uh, send us an email. Uh, and once we get that email, then that information will be communicated to me and we'll get it to the right person to answer. The, uh, if when we are done you, and you still have some questions or you want some help, you're welcome to call 270-686-1662. That's the Alderman area number and the Alderman area actually uh, oversees the distribution of all three pots of money that we're going to talk about today uh, or uh, you can contact them on their email and I think is it Alderman dash it's Alderman dash area dot com slash assistance dash request so you can go online and you can send a, a question about this this program to them there so with no further ado, first of all, I'm going to ask uh, Robin if you would come up. And I don't know, if Brandon, if you want to come up with Robin, that's fine. But I think that uh, you, Robin, you're going to talk about lie heap and lie wap. Okay. And then what I'll do, you come on up. And when you finish, what I'm going to do is, is ask Blaine or Blake to come up and talk about the $200,000 in utility assistance that uh, Davis County received uh, from the governor's office. It's, it's uh, CDBG uh, COVID relief funds. Uh, the CDBG stands for Community Development and Block Grant. And then I'm gonna have Brandon come up because Brandon kind of oversees the distribution of that money. And last but not least, Blaine, not Blake, Blaine, will come up and he's gonna tell us a little bit about a, a number that unfortunately still a lot of people in our community don't know and it's the 211 number. And 211 is where you can call and it is a wonderful, it's a wealth of knowledge. It's in effect a directory for the entire community and where you can go to get help. So Robin, I'm gonna turn it over to you first. 
Thank you, Judge, and good afternoon. You've got Blake and Brandon and Blaine. So, yeah, that's kind of a tongue twister. I'm Robin Mattingly. I'm Social Support Services Director for Audubon Area Community Services. And the LIHEAP program is within my department. LIHEAP is L-I-H-E-A-P. We live and die by our acronyms but it stands for Low Income Home Energy Assistance Program. Now this program has been administered for years and years and years. It's nothing new. Historically, the LIHEAP program has run in two components. There's a fall component and a winter component. The fall is considered subsidy, and that's generally a one-time assistance program. Benefit amounts can vary anywhere from 50 to $200, depending on income levels. In the, the winter months, which is typically from January through March or until our funds are depleted, that's called crisis. The difference with that is that individuals have to have a disconnect in order to apply for services, and those benefits typically have a max benefit of $400. What's happened since March of 2020, we have run consistently. There's not been a break in our services. There's been spring programs. We've had summer programs, our typical fall program and winter program. This year, since July 1, we started off with a summer cooling. We ran our subsidy program and our crisis program simultaneously. It was for electric only. Now, individuals had to be at or below 150% of the federal poverty guidelines in order to be eligible to apply. For our subsidy, again, it was a one-time assistance. There was a cap of benefit anywhere from 50 to $200 for our water, excuse, our summer cooling crisis, I'm sorry, there was a benefit uh, max amount there. Again, they had to have a disconnect, but it, it was for uh, $400. I can tell you our summer cooling program ran from July the 1st to October 31st, electric only, keep in mind. In Davis County, in our subsidy, we processed 1,579 applications. We were able to award benefits to residents of Davis County in the amount of $552,600. For our crisis component, we ran 1,461 applications. Our benefits were $432,984. That was a total of 3,040 applications, and we were able to award benefits of $965,584. Our fall subsidy program began November 1st. That was for gas or electric, or it could be propane, it could be kerosene, it could be coal, wood. The max benefits, again, $400, I'm sorry, Subsidy. See, I, I still get them confused too. The fall is a subsidy program. Benefit from 50 to $200. We ran 1,021 apps. Our benefits were $174,750. That ran from November the 1st to December the 10th. Winter crisis began January the 10th. We will run until March 31st or until our funds are depleted. In Davis County, as of 9.30 this morning, we've done 798 applications, benefits in the amount of $204,038.57. Again, that is for Davis County only. The new program that has been running since January is called LIWAP. L-I-H-W-A-P, that's Low Income Home Water Wastewater Assistance Program. The excuse me, eligibility again is 150% of federal poverty guidelines or below. We're running again simultaneously a subsidy and crisis program. But since January the 1st, 399 applications for $143,961. And those benefits, being a different program, they were, 
are a little bit different, but they can range anywhere from $50 to $400. That's in our subsidy. Our crisis, 107 apps for $23,876. Again, that has we have to have a disconnect, and the max benefit is $800. In order for anybody to apply, we need several things. We need, first of all, a copy of a driver's license, if they have one. We need copies of Social Security cards for everybody in the household. We also require proof of income for everyone in the household for the previous month. So if somebody comes to us today, we are gonna be looking at their January income. We also need for subsidy, the most recent bill. For the crisis, we have to have a disconnect. Now a lot of folks rent. So in the, the event that they rent and their utilities are included in that rent, then we need a letter from the landlord to state that or a copy of their lease to state that. If it's a crisis situation, we need an eviction notice in order to process the crisis. So total benefits in Davis County since July 1 to encompass our LIHEAP and our LIWAP is $1,512,210 that's a lot of help for our folks in Davis County, Judge. We still have some more funds though, and we'll keep processing those applications until those funds are depleted. So I'll be happy to answer any questions, but I think we've got some more folks that want to come up. Don't go away. All right. Robin, uh, why don't you tell the folks what is 150% of poverty level? Well, I just so happen to have that. For a family of one, a household of one, the monthly income cannot exceed $1,610. For two, it's $2,178. Three, $2,745. Four, $3,313. And if the households are larger than that, I do have those amounts as well. And if someone is not sure, Call the number. What was that number? Our LIHEAP number in Davis County is 270-686-1662. We also encourage individuals to go to our online portal. As the judge said, you go to www.audubon-area.com. At the bottom of that page, there's a button. It says Request Assistance. Individuals can go on there. They can either schedule for one of our staff members to give them a call or they can actually download that application. They can upload all those required documents. Everything is right there. Our staff will call them when that application has been processed to tell them what their benefit amount is. Or if a staff member gets in there and let's say they're missing proof of income or they don't have their copies of their social or their bill, then staff will call and say, you know what, we, we need this in order to continue to process. It's also very important when somebody goes into that portal to make sure that they save their information and they click submit and they'll get a confirmation or verification number that yes, indeed, that application did go through. Okay. Thank All right, you. you're welcome. And just as an aside, I have uh, often had calls or comments about I keep calling that number and I can't get anyone to answer. It's very busy, number one. And number two, sometimes we are short on staff uh, because of COVID and social distancing and all those other things. I would suggest you go online if you can. If you can't, though, just keep calling and somebody will get back to you. All right, guys, the next, yes, come ahead. It's also, because as the judge said, yes, sometimes our offices are understaffed because of COVID or because, you know, we're on the phone trying to help other folks. We can't get to all the calls right away. It's also very, very important that if somebody wants to apply, especially if they have a disconnect notice, to contact our office as soon as they get that notice. Don't wait until you're going to be disconnected that day 
or the next day or even a couple of days later because we can't always promise that we're going to get that application processed right away. So please apply early. Okay. Thank you. And I promise, Rob and I've known her for a long time. We're not kin, even though our last names are Mattingly, but she's pretty hard headed just like I am and she will advocate as hard as she can for you and any of the folks here in Davis County. All right, guys, I gave Robin some extra time. You're gonna to have to make up for the time, extra time that I gave her. So uh, Blake, why don't you come up real quick, tell us about the CDBG funds that, that we applied for and got, and then Brandon, you're on deck and be ready to come up and explain what they should be doing. Thank you, Judge. So the main, there's one main difference uh, with these block grant funds for utility assistance. This program was created by the state of Kentucky to specifically serve uh, utility assistance during COVID. Uh, originally it was for water sewer, but then the needs opened up uh, and it covers electric and gas. The big difference uh, with these funds is there is no income limit. There's zero income limit. Uh, you are asked to provide a proof of income, um, but if you have been affected by COVID in any way, uh, you are eligible um, for assistance with past due on electric, water, gas, and sewer. Um, that payment is made directly to the utilities uh, through Audubon as well. Um, Audubon takes care of all of our intake and uh, application process with that. and. To date, uh, when we started this program, there was $1.6 million uh, in past due balances. Uh, people have really paid uh, that down uh, to, I think right now we've only given out 14,000 in Davis County of CDBG utility assistance money. We have 200,000. Um, so we really just wanna get the word to the people who need it. Um, call our office, call Audubon and we'd be glad to help. Thanks, Judge. Yes, sir. I want to say that Blake uh, knows what it is to have an impatient judge executive in a county because I was contacting him every week, beating on his head to get this money available. We were the first county in the Commonwealth to complete our application, the first county in the Commonwealth to be awarded the money. As Blake said, it's $200,000. We've only been giving out 14,000, and that's really because we are that pot of last resort. We, we use the other funds and it comes on down there. It really is, I'm not gonna be very happy if I've gotta return some of that money to Frankfurt. If we don't use it here, it's gonna go back to Frankfurt and will be used for something else. I think everybody, that pot of money, there are so many restrictions and rules and regulations that everybody is having a hard time, such a hard time that the, the state government has uh, asked us, hey, if you can't use it, we want it back. And I don't wanna give them anything back. So I'd rather see it be in the pockets of our Davis County folks. Um, the, this, is, this is not for future bills, right? Correct. This, this, this is for past, past due bills, so it's no, there is no help if you're trying to get money for your March water or sewer bill or electric. This is actually for past due. But the really great thing is there is no income limit. That 150% of poverty level does not apply. So I would really encourage you to, to apply for this. We chose all of an area to be our agent to distribute the money simply because they already do it with Lie Heap and Lie Lap. Although Lie Lap is a pretty new program, I think. So, all right, thank you. Brandon? Oh, I can remember Brandon's last name, Harley, because of that motorcycle that he rides all over Owensboro, Davis County. Thank you, Judge. Uh, appreciate it, the opportunity to come and speak with everyone today. Um, just to clarify uh, some things, we have multiple, multiple lines of assistance that we can provide folks in Davis County as well as uh, individuals in all the grad counties. 
but specifically here in Davis County, uh, outside of what we've discussed already regarding the lie heap, the lie WAP, and the CDBG, there's also other uh, smaller uh, fund funding streams that we have available as well. So for those individuals who are Kenergy clients, we participate in what they call the Corey program. It's the Kenergy uh, Operation Roundup Initiative. So any Kenergy customer has the opportunity to round up their bill to the closest next dollar. So if you have a, do a bill that's say $100.41, you can roll up to $101. It goes into a pot and we partner with Kenergy to round up and assist individuals who are Kenergy clients to pay those, uh, those bills as well. And those Kenergy uh, customers are eligible for $200 of assistance per year in that program as well. In addition to the water, energy, wastewater, and CDBG assistance, we also have out been allocated some additional funds to the CARES Act originally that we've uh, put forth to uh, assist in some additional utility assistance as well as some housing and rental assistance. Uh, those funds came through what we call the Community Services Block Grant. So we have discussed earlier today the Community Development Block Grant, which is a lot of development block grant funds that come through Department of Local Government to help with a lot of infrastructure projects for counties. Community Services Block Grant are individual human services project and programs that we use to help individuals and families um, alleviate the barriers that they inter that interfere with their life, whether it be uh, utility assistance problems, lack of rent, mobility, transportation, food, clothing, et cetera. So uh, here in Davis County or within the region, and, we, and a portion of this will be pulled off the Davis County, we've pulled in some additional rental assistance, mortgage assistance, as well as a small portion of utility assistance as well. In addition to those, we also offer some food assistance programs. We are, have some partnerships with some of the uh, what, uh, the managed care organizations here in the state of Kentucky, specifically with United Healthcare as well as Molina Passport. Uh, we, we've received a couple thousand dollars from those folks. So we can assist families who make applications with uh, direct food and emergency food assistance as well as needed. So uh, Audubon area does have a bevy of human services uh, funding programs to help offset many of the issues that folks are facing. Uh, COVID has been difficult, been difficult for our region, for our families and folks uh, all throughout the region. Uh, in addition, I think the judge has alluded to this a little earlier when we began, Audubon also isn't immune to the issues uh, along with COVID as well. So I do see a lot of the social media posts and I hear uh, a lot of phone calls about delays in trying to get applications processed or trying to get in contact with our office. Uh, we're working through as, as many as we can. We take applications on a first come, first serve basis. The staff are working diligently to go through those, whether they be direct phone calls or well as the online portal that we, uh, that we discussed a little bit earlier. And our staff will get back with folks. They call them back once we receive the documents. We call them back if we need to have questions, as well as we follow up and let folks know what they're eligible for and that the payment will be made. So all I ask is for everybody to be as patient as possible. As Judge stated, if you have a question, please call our local office here at 270-686-1662. Or come back to the online portal again. Uh, the website's www.audubon-area.com. And you'll go to the request assistance tab at the bottom of the page and you can leave your name and number. Please ensure that you provide us a good, good contact information, whether it be a valid phone number, a neighbor's phone number, or a valid email address that you check frequently so we can get back in touch with folks as well. Um, it's important for us to be able to have that contact in those times that we need that additional documentation or to follow up and tell folks what they're eligible for. So uh, we just want to make sure that we got this information out to everyone today to share in this, and we'll be happy to answer any questions anyone has. Well, Blaine, come on up. Uh, Brandon took up the extra time that you were going to have, but you're going to tell them about a number that they can call and get some information, right? Yes, sir. Yes, and sir. And you've got all of about two minutes. Oh, I can do it. So this uh, number is near and dear to my heart. Uh, when I started out at United Way, I was tasked with uh, finding every single program in our region and listing that into an online database that can be accessed 24-7, uh, 365, uh, via phone, website, text message, or application. And that number is 211. Uh, anybody can call 211 any time of day and get connected to over 1,800 different resources uh, in our region. And a lot of people use that to get utility assistance. Uh, you can get connected to uh, the 12 or 13 programs that uh, Robin manages and the many programs that uh, Auden Area has, of course, all the other programs in town that are providing utility assistance. Uh, not only that, but addiction recovery services, summer feeding programs, uh, child care, uh, senior meals, 
nursing homes and even special population services. Uh, you can get a hold of anything um, uh, service-wise by calling 211. Uh, anybody in the state of Kentucky can talk to 211. Earlier uh, this year, uh, we launched 211 across the state of Kentucky, so everyone in KY has access to the 211 resource database. Uh, just to give you some stats here, uh, we've had about 3,500 calls uh, regionally uh, the 211 service since COVID uh, happened. 2,500 of those have been in Davis County. 536 of those have been for uh, utility assistance. Uh, so there's definitely a need for utility assistance and obviously the great program that you all have. Um, so a great feature of 211, they don't just learn about um, where the resources are or what agency to go to. Uh, they're gonna learn the address of the agency. They're gonna know what time that they are open and they're gonna need to know the requirements. I know that you touched on this a little bit, what they needed to bring uh, document-wise. Uh, when you call, you're gonna talk to a live person and they're gonna let you know that you need to go uh, between eight and noon on Monday and Friday. And that you're gonna need to bring your identification, that you need to bring a disconnect notice uh, so that you're absolutely, absolutely prepared for that meeting. Uh, if people are having trouble paying their bills, uh, they're probably having a hard time putting gas in their car. Uh, so we want them to be as prepared as they can be uh, when they go to the agency so they get the services they need one trip. Um, so yeah, that's what happened. Oh, thank you, yes, sir. Blaine, I'm sorry, uh, at the next half hour, the Zoom meeting, I'm gonna bring you up first and then I'm gonna muzzle Robin so that she doesn't <laughs> take up so much time. Uh, folks, that's that's all we've got time for. Jordan, I think we're, we're trying to get done here a little bit early. I would ask that if uh, any of the uh, news media that's here would have questions for the folks who presented, uh, perhaps we go out in the hallway real quick. You do that while we get set up for the other Zoom. Thanks everyone for, for being with us this morning or this afternoon for watching. And uh, if you know anyone, this doesn't necessarily have to apply to you, but if you know someone that's struggling, uh, have them call. And let me tell you one thing, and, and I serve on the social services committee uh, with Robin, and there's one thing that we absolutely believe, there is no shame. If you need help, you need help. Uh, my family, when I was growing up, needed help. I've needed help. Do not be ashamed to ask folks because there are lots of folks in this community who stand ready to step up and help you in any way that they can. So thanks for being here.